Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here at Outlander Cast. Um, you are going to be watching us as we podcast live. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Mute that. So uh, my name's Mary. And I'm Blake. And if you are brand new to Outlander Cast, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We record a podcast that you can find on iTunes, on Stitcher, on our website, outlandercast.com. We've been podcasting about the show since it began. I've read the books. Blake has not. We try to keep the comments in Facebook Live spoiler free because a lot of people who tune into Outlander Cast are just like Blake. They just watch the show. So mm -hmm. please make sure that you keep spoilers out of here. If you do want to talk spoilers, we do have an amazing group called the Outlander Cast Clan Book Club. Make sure that you join that group. Now, just so you know, we will be able to see your comments, but we won't be always able to really interact with them because we are focused on the podcast episode. But this is a great time for you to chat amongst yourselves <laughs> and kind of act like a fly on the wall to see how the podcast business is done. This podcast is going to be up. What do you think, Blake, tomorrow afternoon? Uh, I would say even tomorrow morning. Possibly tomorrow morning. You will want to make sure that you subscribe in your podcast app. If you don't have one, you should totally get one. So if you just want to stop in, say a little hello, feel free to do that. Um, yeah. Let us know where you're from in the comments below. Please feel free to use those little buttons at the bottom, the, the thumbs up, the hearts, the wow, the emojis. That helps us see and gauge the reaction. So feel free to use those as much as you possibly want. Sorry, I'm just going to do Blake is adjusting, and uh, we are in our pajamas. We've had a heck of a week <laughs> with our children. So, you know, oh, well, we're Facebook Live and in our PJs. That's how it works. It's because we're awesome like that. <sighs> like it. Right? Just love it. Right? Amen. Amen. You can, you can say a little hello. Uh, okay. Well, everybody, hello. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We are about to start the podcast. And, as, of course, as always, I do um, recommend that you listen to the show on the podcast app. That is how this show is meant to be consumed. This is just a fly in the wall experience. And of course, we love having the show in of front course. of all you guys. Of course. We love seeing everything. And uh, hi, Arwen. How are you? Anna, how are you? Um, Nancy, very, very uh, happy to see you, as well as you, Sandy. And Nancy's in her PJs too, which is very PJs, nice to see. PJs for life. P uh, PJ party. Okay. Uh, so I think if you are ready, my darling, I think I am ready to go. Lisa, hello. How are you? Uh, I think we are ready to go here if you are, my darling. Awesome. Yes. And just so you guys know, for anyone who is brand new to Outlander Cast, uh, feel free to ask questions like, where can I find the podcast? What app can I use? Feel free to ask those. And then those of you who are longtime veterans of Outlander Cast, feel free to answer them because we won't be able to do five things at once yeah. <laughs> while we do this podcast. So those of you who've been around, those of you who are in the clan, welcome, everybody. Yes, welcome, everybody. Welcome. And uh, it, uh, just for the sake of posterity, you can find all of this every single episode every blog entry everything at outlandercast.com and you'll be able to listen to everything including my most recent episode one that i did without my darling wife it was an interview with the outlander director of photography steve mcnutt and i will say i had i nerded out yes, pretty hard on this yes episode. you did and uh while i was sad that i couldn't do it with my gorgeous uh, bride across Where? the way from me we had some great conversations. Please do if you like filmmaking and everything that goes into what it takes to make a film or in this or what case, it takes to make Outlander. Outlander. Uh, in the lighting and how it's all set up and everything, please do listen to the uh, interview with Steve McNutt. It was a fantastic interview, and I'm quite proud of it. Uh, and again, because it's, you know, as I called it in the episode, it's nerd porn. <laughs> That's what it is. It's just, it's all about learning how to or what it takes rather to be a director of photography and what the director of photography does how he works with or she works with the director itself and how they work and use colors and filters and digital and regular film to create all the lighting and and, and the, actually the picture that you see on screen that's how it all works so i was really excited about that interview awesome I'm really excited about this episode. Are you? Are you guys ready? Uh, Are you ready? Here we go. All right, just give me a couple uh, seconds of silence, and then okay. we will be able to do it. Silence. 
episode 96 of Outlander Cast is brought to you by BarkBox. For a free extra month of BarkBox, visit BarkBox.com slash open when you subscribe to a 6 or 12 month plan. I'm the one who knows you better than anyone. You know who doesn't know me? Jamie. You owe it to him to go back. And I want you to go. And tell him everything. What if he's forgotten me? <sighs> or what if he doesn't love me anymore? You told me what you felt for Jamie was the most powerful thing you ever felt in your life. Has that changed? No. And you have to trust it's the same for him. You gave Jamie up for me. Now I have to give him back to you. Oh, hold on. Something is amiss. Facebook Live, you get to see. This part's going to be edited. Blake just pushed a button incorrectly. <laughs> Something is amiss. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to go back here. <laughs> and I'm just going to tread water right now. Hey, how's it going? Hey, girl. Hey. You know what I want to know next? Your kilt ratings. Because we're going to be talking about ours in a little bit. So on a scale of one to five kilts, how would you rate this? Rate, not rate. How would you rate this week's episode? You got it, Blake? All right, hold on one sec. Now I have to give him back to you. Okay, ready? Yes. All the way from Cranston, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Sing me a song of a last that is gone. Say to that last the eye. Mary of Sue, she sailed on a day over the sea. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm your host, Mary Larson. My name's Blake. Oh, and you're in puberty. And I just <laughs> cracked my voice. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, that was not what I was expecting to happen right now. I'm not going to lie. You're all beclimped after that, that Jeez, episode. Jeez, what an episode. What Woo. an episode. Seriously. Woo. Man, that was something. That was a surprise. That was, that was a whole bunch of something. So super excited. For you to be joining us here on Outlander Cast, just as a quick reminder, I have read the books. Blake, my amazing husband, has not. He is starting to read Outlander. Wait, can you say that again? My amazing husband. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Is starting to read Outlander. You can learn his uh, reactions. You can you can hear about his reactions to the book, mm -hmm. Outlander, if you join our Patreon community at patreon.com slash Outlandercast. Shameless but, plug. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so he has he has no idea what's coming. This whole episode was was... Something you knew was going to happen. Yes, we, I knew that we were going back. Yes, and it, because of the preview, which Correct. was unfortunate, and you know that was one thing I think that uh, we, as a podcast, addressed last episode, and it's something that we don't normally address because, you know, we don't like to talk about the spoilers. But I felt that what they talked, what they did, and what they showed was so egregious. Um that it needed to be talked yeah. about. So I, I do apologize for those who are out there that listened to the episode and was like, what are you talking about the preview for? Like, that's spoiler. Yes. Like, okay, you know what? I was just so mad and I was so upset, but I was excited uh, that I, I just felt that it needed to be. So from here on out, as a reminder, you're not watching the trailers. You're not watching the previews for next week. Mm -hmm. No, no, I did not. I almost think we need to go as far as to not know that not let you watch the previously on outlander from here on out but maybe no you need that. no no because that uh, that provides context okay okay the context is okay knowing the future the future is no good especially for my outlandish theories of the week yeah so we're in the here and now and i want to know your kilt rating on a scale of one to five for this episode episode 305 freedom and whiskey what would you give it you know 
I've gone back and forth on this kill rating a lot. Ooh. And uh, I've struggled. And ultimately, I think I came down to a compromise for myself. And that was four and a half. Four and a half kills. Mm-hmm. I actually quite enjoyed this episode. Yes, you did. I really did. Uh, I, I enjoyed it on a lot of different levels. Mm-hmm. I thought that the Batman theme song was <laughs> terrific. <laughs> I thought it was great. And we'll get into that later on. And I, I loved the stuff between the honest moments between Bree and Roger, uh, Bree and Claire, the honest moment that we have between, spoiler alert, Claire and Jamie, uh, even Joe and I Claire. Love how, I love how you give a spoiler alert <laughs> warning to that. Watch out. <laughs> uh, I, these are all real honest moments that we'll get into that I really appreciated. Mm-hmm. But the thing that takes it down for me, a couple of things. Some of the dialogue in this episode was just atrocious. Ooh, atrocious. That's a word. That and is a word. I know. And I know. Atrocious, and, like because of the choice of the words that they chose. Well, it, because how of it was how delivered? it was how it was written, in my opinion, like okay. the one the one that really stands out. Oh, I know which one. I know you know, but the one that really stands out is what is history? What is history? We can't trust it. You know. However, <laughs> I sat there being like, yeah. Yeah, what is history, girl? <laughs> Preach. That's something I think I've said many I just, times. I thought that was so on the nose, and a lot they kept on bashing you over the head with stuff like, like what? with like Claire's um, first voiceover after the the moon, and you know Joe says, "How can you come back to your life after this and have it be normal?" And then it's like voiceover. It's like, no, let that sit. Oh my let god! It... Then her looking up at the the moon. But you liked right. this episode a lot. But so I loved it's a four point five. So what it. is your? But, but let me also say one other thing too that I that, the reason why I'm like the, the dialogue thing it, it it was annoying, but I could get past that. Okay. The one thing that really bothered me most was something that I've been saying about Claire and the story for quite some time. Anytime Claire has this major change, whether it was, uh going back to oh, going to Scotland mm-hmm. and going through the stones or meet, getting married to Jamie, consummating the, that marriage, going back through the stones again. She uh, drinks. Uh, and then, and, and then Frank dying. And then now all of a sudden this with going, her going back to Scotland, all of these choices, they aren't hers to make. They've all been made oh my for God, her. I was literally just saying, cause she drinks before each choice. Yeah, I know. Right. I know. <laughs> all, 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 all whiskey, all, all these choices are made for her and it's like they absolve Claire of any wrongdoing before she makes these choices. Uh, And what I mean is like when it's like when she, I've said this before, when Claire gets married to Jamie, well, she has to because black Jack Randall needs her. Mm -hmm. And, and then she has to, she has to have sex with Jamie. She has to consummate the marriage so that it's legal. You you, you can't get mad at Claire for consummating a marriage when she's still married to Frank back in the forties. You can't get mad at her because that's just what the plot demands. The same thing goes with her going back to the stones. The decision is made for her. Jamie doesn't force her, but Jamie tells her you need to go. You can't get mad at Claire for just following what Jamie wants. You can't get mad at Claire for moving on with the life after Frank because Frank dies. And you can't get mad at Claire for wanting to go back to the stones because Bree absolves her. Why are you saying can't get mad at Claire? Who's mad at Claire? No, I'm just saying like she, Claire Claire doesn't have any choices. Like for me the dr- the drama is when you have a choice. She has choices. I'm sorry, you have an obstacle yeah. and you have two viable choices stay in boston or go to scotland right but the choice that's made for her is brie saying go go please get out of here you do this i'm okay i'm grown up it's not like claire by making this choice upsets brie it's not like by making this choice she loses anything i completely disagree okay that's fine that's fine i I understand i understand i'm just saying that's my kill rating which is a 4.5 which is what ultimately what i'm saying is the reason why i'm giving a 4.5 is because of that other than that I really loved this episode. Yeah, you did. I really did. I thought it was fantastic. Lots of great character moments. Uh, lots of natural moments, honest moments. Uh, I felt that the music choices were good. I loved the Batman thing. I know a lot of people didn't. I freaking thought it was so creative and fun mm-hmm. and uh, a nod. And it, it works on a multiple different levels. We'll get into later on. 
loved it. How about you, my darling? I, I'm done blathering. Oh, good. That was a blabber. I love you. But yes, <laughs> you went on. Sorry. My my kilt rating is a 4.9. 4.9. Really? I could have done without so much guts and blood for so long. And that's how it opened. And I oh, just I eaten. <laughs> so for that reason alone. <laughs> and um, I mean, I really loved this episode. I really, really loved it. I just rewatching it. I still couldn't watch that part. I'm just squeamish. I'm just a little squeamish. Um, no, I love this episode. I mean, heck, let's just call it a five. Let's just call it a five. Okay, guys, that blood just grossed me out. But it was this was a five. This, <laughs> this was, was a five, five for you. me. I had a lot of fun. Um, all I needed was a little bit of Christmas. And I was like, done. Sign me up. This episode could, episode could suck. And I'm happy because I love Christmas. But it was an amazing episode, in my opinion. I loved right. it. So big old five blood and guts. I guess I'll take them both. So our <laughs> listeners weighed in and on Facebook, Lori Ruff White said something I really, really liked. Jamie has had his brows furrowed for 20 years in all of season three episodes. And the minute he looks a bit clear, he looks young and his brows aren't furrowed. It's like his face transforms at that moment. Well done. Five kilts. Debbie S. Morin says, I was holding my breath as Claire appeared at the opening, looking down as she said, no, it's me, Claire. My tablet froze. I woke up everyone in the house with my screams of all the places for my screen to freeze. Thank goodness I got it back. Too many emotions tonight for me to handle. Five kilts. Teresa Kali McGuire gave it 3.5 kilts. The Sandy confrontation was a nice surprise that she didn't expect. As a viewer, she's still having trouble connecting with Bree and Roger and still feels like uh, there's filler. they are fillers in the episode. She's hoping once the story moves forward that she'll become more invested in those characters, but the ending was more than Teresa expected. Jamie and Claire lay eyes on each other, their faces when Jamie hits the floor. The reaction that she had to the final scene was first heart-pounding, then breathless. The reunion is finally upon us. Woohoo! All right, my love, what do you got for your GBG, the my good, G bad, B great? G. My good is that it's Christmas. <laughs> I know. Some of you are like, really, Mary? Yes, guys, I am a Christmas elf. Christmas is like literally one of my most favorite times of the year. And I did not expect Claire Randall, for, well, she was Randall in this time. So Claire, Claire Randall, I did not expect her to have so much Christmas swag. All the tchotchkes, <laughs> all the tchotchkes and the tinsel. I was like, Claire would way, not do way too tinsel. Much tinsel. Way what? too much tinsel. There's a lot of cleaning up, but she's a busy surgeon. But okay, tinsel was really in. But all the tchotchkes, all the garland, all the bows, every like even in her kitchen, she had like those funny little Christmas things that they'd open up and they were like 3D, you mm -hmm. know, or 2D, you know, whatever. 3D. I got you. you know what I'm talking about. Um, loved it. Loved that it was Christmas. Um, I loved. Roger coming in at Christmas, it felt like, oh, uh, what's that movie that I love? Oh, uh, the one that is about love. Love Actually. Love Actually. <laughs> <laughs> what's that wall in, in Berlin? Uh, yeah, um, that one in that, that Berlin, what, what's the name of that I mean, wall? that's like another reason I love Love Actually is because it's all around <laughs> Christmas time. So, yes, Christmas is my good. My bad. Ooh, I, just... I had a major problem with this one. <laughs> one if by land, two if by C. Okay? They're at Harvard. Okay, yeah. so it's like, all right, we're in Boston. Okay, we're in Cambridge, and where does Brie live? Where's Brie from? Oh, Boston. You don't think she knew about Paul Revere? Okay, a lot of you who don't live in the Boston, Rhode Island area may not know the true story of Paul Revere, but I'll tell you what when you go on your fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, 12th grade, whatever field trip to Boston, it is quite literally one of the first things that gets pointed out to you when you're on the Freedom Trail. Well, it, what we were saying is that she didn't know about the two other jabronis that were with him. Yeah. And she was she had this look like, oh, my God, I, I didn't know that. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Like the whole story <laughs> about Paul Revere not being the one to actually like save the day. But he had a great publicist. Mm -hmm. And Brie was like, no way. And I was like, no, Boston girl would say no way. They all know that. Right. They all know this. They're taught it like every year of their life. So that was my bad just because it was completely unbelievable as a fellow New Englander. Mm -hmm. I was like, Ch -ch -ch. Brie would know that when she was born. Mm -hmm. And my great was the faint. The turn <laughs> slash faint. Just collapsed. Like melt like butter. I don't know how he did that without getting bruises. Loved it. Blake, what was your GBG? My good. Uh, I've already said a couple of these, so but I'm just going to reiterate them. The good was the Batman theme. I thought it was so clever. You, It was something that you could bring into the show that shows creativity. It shows a lot of fun with the material. 
and you don't get a chance to put these kind of pop culture references in this show. It's it's based in the 1700s for the most part. So the ability to put these references in there and also that self-awareness of her Claire creating her own suit and the self-awareness of the writing where Roger's like, you can be like the caped crusader yourself. And, mm-hmm. the, and then it's just all self-aware. And I, and it even like the, it was even aware of itself in terms of how kind of ludicrous it is a little bit that Claire is making her own costume and sewing it and overnight and putting pockets and utility belts and like all, you know, it's just, did you just mention the deep thing that you were saying last well, night? I'm, I'm going, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to okay, get good, into that. Good. I just want to make but, sure I didn't miss that. I think in a, in a lot of ways, the deep thing that I'm going to get at is the Batman theme, even though it is silly, it works on multiple levels here. And there is this one meta level, like a professional tease. You ready for this? Yep. Who is Claire? That is the conversation of today, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Who is Claire? Is it a mask? I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. That's that's what this conversation is about. <laughs> Who is so, the person behind the mask? I really loved and I, you know, I also had a tie here. Um, for the good, because I, I really wanted to get this in as much as I really couldn't stand Roger and Bree last episode. Mm-hmm. Finally getting to spend time with them. Yes. Finally getting something genuine and real mm-hmm. and natural out of them. And the first real moment, like the first real moment I have with them is when she has the lobster rolls and the Boston cream pie. By the way, Roger, Boston cream pie. Like oh my God. That. <laughs> yes, so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, God, that It's accent. so funny because, like, I had seen a couple, a couple of people say, like, ooh, why would they have lobster rolls? Literally, that's what people ask for. If they mm-hmm. come from a different area of the country they want up here, they want to eat lobster. And Boston cream pie. You know. Love that. And then him giving her the Christmas carol. I, I just... Mic drop. Like, and then they kiss at the end. And and I, I was like, you look back on it, you're like, oh my God, why did you share that first kiss in Scott? Like, that was a perfect moment for a first kiss. Like, whatever. What I'm saying is, that was great. You Having that it. genuine moment. Yes. The, the bad. <laughs> what is history? What is history? <laughs> we can't trust it. <laughs> This is something I would so say. Oh, you know God. I would. That I've had was, these conversations with that you. That was so bad. Because like, it's based upon who writes you know, it. And, and let let that Paul Revere lesson sit. Let it breathe. Let Why it... didn't you like that conversation? I, As I've said, Because I it's would too have literal. It's too on the nose. It's in your face. And yes, I understand you... Uh, you're not sure who to believe. You're not sure. I do like the Roger part of that conversation, though, about how he was able to have the history, uh, have this history of his father and how that was important. Yeah, and okay, I so like that. That's you good. That. Okay. That's good. And, and she says, you know, and he says, you know, what does it matter? Mm-hmm. Um, but let that Paul Revere history lesson sit. Let it breathe. And by breathe, I mean, let the viewer engage with that. We all know that Jamie is her father. He gets all the credit like uh like uh paul revere did but paul revere wasn't the one that finally got to uh get got to boston More, yeah. it was another guy yeah frank is the other guy frank is the guy that's forgotten in history he frank is the publicist. guy that's overlooked he had a bad publicist candy sandy <laughs> <laughs> we know that already mm-hmm. let that sit and let and let let her figure that over out over time and the great subverting all of our expectations, at least my, so when I say all, I mean, I mean me, uh, subverting my expectations uh, with the faint. Yeah. You know, you have this one beautiful moment that you're building up to, and it's going to be great. It's going to be Jamie and Claire. They're finally back to each other. Uh, it's not Jordy. It's me, Claire. He, he's, you could, you don't see his face, but you know what he's looking like. You know what he's, what he's thinking turns around he was expecting to see ashton kutcher and yeah (laughs) he's getting punked yeah and all of a sudden boom faint and it was funny it took the tension in in that moment because we're all holding our breath we're all holding our breath i will tell you i listen i I like alvander a lot i don't often find myself like holding my breath i don't often be like oh my god this is the greatest thing ever but as claire is walking up that staircase and the hand is going up the 
the rail. You are so And she stiff. opens the door. The bell rings. I was holding my breath. I was like, <gasps> I, I just. You. My you. heart was Six pumping. Six foot four, Blake Larson. I know. He I'm was like, literally sitting on the couch like this. <laughs> this is great podcast radio, by the way. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, <laughs> Jamie faints. And you started laughing. I know. I just laughed because it Your was amazing. Laugh. It took all that tension. It took everything that the show was building towards mm -hmm. and just let it loose. And it let it you could engage with that. It's a funny moment. It's a it's a genuine moment. One that, you know, I don't know if I, I, I would faint, but I feel like if I met my wife again after 20 years, I would be like, holy F, like. I can't believe this just happened. So uh, that was my great, just subverting all of our expectations. Yes, I love it. All right. We've got um, a GBG from Paula Schlepp Frank. Love Paula. She said, wow, do I have some mixed feelings about this episode? Of all the episodes so far, I felt like this one has been the most plot contrived one so far, which is ironic considering it's been the only one following a single storyline and character. It felt like they were just throwing everything in that they could to set up for the upcoming storyline with very little rhyme or reason. Now, that being said, damn, it feels good to be back in Scotland again. Paul is good, but she's glad that we got to see the friendship between Claire and Joe. That was an important part of Claire's life and really helps us feel like maybe there'll be still some sort of parental figure out there for Brie. Her bad? Really? Sandy Candy had to come just one more time to point out what a a B, a B word. I'm not going to say that on Facebook. B -I -T -C -H. You, yeah, Claire was to make the case for St. Frank. Grr, I'm over it. And her great, who's been talking about how Sam's been killing it with the facial acting. But tonight, Paula thinks the episode, or last night, when, you know, the night that it came yeah, out, she sure. thought the acting went to to cat the expressions on her face when she opens the door covered it all the thrill of hearing his voice the worry that he won't love her anymore the joy at seeing him it was all there and lit gorgeously her heart was pounding out of her chest paula found herself holding her breath just waiting for his reaction along with her huzzah for being back in the 18th century where we belong paula thank you for calling out the how it was lit that is the director of photography at work that is pure cinematography and you get a chance to listen to all of that in our latest episode with Outlander cinematographer or director of photography, Steve McNutt. And you will learn all about why that episode or why how lighting can affect a episode and how it can affect a scene. Just saying, very proud of that episode. Very proud of that interview. So excited. So hey, humble. Hey, and, so humble. <laughs> and I want to have a special shout out here to um, a clan member. Sabrina Ellis, she says three words. I was right. I called the end on a post the other day, and you'd think I won the Super Bowl up in here, LOL. Ooh. And you know what? Sabrina even provided a screen capture of that comment, and she is 100% right. She called that it would end on Jamie fainting. Now, I know, I know the Outlandish Theories of the Week are my thing, but I am very happy to pass the mantle Yay. on to Sabrina. And Sabrina, this one is for you. Bam. Like that. A so I'm very proud of you for calling that out. Excellent job. My darling, are you ready to get into yes, this episode? All right, let's let's uh, let's get to it. Oh, no, wrong one. You are in a roll tonight with those buttons. Oh, my goodness gracious. Once again, Facebook, you get to see a part that doesn't make it to the podcast. The magic of editing. <laughs> the magic of editing. Sorry. Hold, <coughs> excuse me. Hold on here. Yeah. Cough. Get it all out. Get all. Get, get it all. Shake it all out, baby. All the ugliness out. You get to see a part that doesn't make it to the podcast. The magic. Bam. I'm just going to say quick hello to everybody. I see that Ashley's in so here. I think I'm Kendra's very proud in of here. We've got Anna in here. Darling, Meredith's you in here. We've got a whole bunch of peeps up in here. Bobby's uh, in here. Tammy, Karen, Lisa, okay. Becky, <laughs> Michelle. There, I, got, I got all you. I'm getting all you guys. Okay, you ready? Well, this episode title was called Freedom and Whiskey. Yes, we all know that was referring back to the poem that the lady was reciting at the end of 
of Lost Things. And learn more about that in an upcoming Outlander cast blog post. That's right. And we also, uh, that is a reference to what Jamie, uh, what, what Claire quoted to Jamie and how Roger found Jamie through the time because he quoted it in one of the books that he had printed. Mm hmm. Written by Tony Graffia. Uh, now, we all know who she is, uh, but she is one of the masters behind Battlestar Galactica. She has also written episodes of Rent, The Devil's Mark, The Watch, La Dame Blanche, Faith, Dragonfly and Amber. And, of course, she wrote the last episode of Lost Things. And she also has writing credit for the finale. So this will be the final episode that she writes before episode 313. So excited. This one was directed by Brendan Mayer. Uh, this is his final episode. He directed The Battle Joined, All Debts Paid, and Of Lost Things. And the DP was not Steve McNutt this time. It was Alistair Walker. And he has done all of the episodes with Brendan Mayer. So every episode that was directed by Brendan Mayer, The Battle Joined, All Debts Paid, Of Lost Things. And this one, Alistair Walker was the DP for. So um, this this episode, you know, a lot of people either loved or hated the Batman thing. But, you know, we found it quite interesting about the dual life that Batman has. Right. Who are and, you? And, are oh, you? And I wouldn't even say dual life. I would say half-life. Ooh, yes. Half-life. Uh, yes. Because who, and like you said, who is Batman? Yeah. Are you, is, is he Bruce Wayne? Is he Batman? And so in this is Claire. Claire, the surgeon. Claire, who is a mother of an adult woman. Claire, who is a widow. Um, or is Claire going to scotland right is is claire the person that belongs with jamie is mm -hmm. she the one who belongs in the 1700s and that's why i felt like the batman thing again while silly worked on so many different levels because when you start thinking about it batman is you don't know if bruce wayne is the mask mm -hmm. or you don't know if the bat suit is the mask and i loved even claire looking at herself without her makeup on you know this makeup so far in the season has been very very extreme and i've been thinking of it as a mask mm -hmm. you know it's for for a lot of women myself included i put on more makeup on days when i need to feel more confident when i need to feel like i can put on my face and show the world i'm ready to go and this is something that claire can do that she can control mm -hmm. this is something that she can do to look a certain part even if even if her mind and her heart and her soul is a mess, this is going to look right. So I loved that shot of her with no makeup on while she's really examining her oh, face, yes. seeing her true self. And I was like, you have taken off your mask. You are, are finding you again. You know who you are. You know what you want to be doing. So let's delve into the half lives of Claire in this episode. Right. I feel like Claire has... Well, I don't I don't feel like I know it. And I think everybody else that's listening to this and watching on Facebook Live, they all know that Claire has lived half of a life mm -hmm. uh, with Frank and even Brianna. I'm I'm comfortable with saying that in this entire first until now. I mean, until she's been able to be honest. Right. With this, this first third of the season has been in service of that half-life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, it's been in service of telling you what was happening as Claire navigated her, her existence without Jamie. And even her accepting that Jamie wasn't a part of her life. I mean, I, I just, you know, she, she, yes, she's a surgeon. Yes, she has all of these things. But she doesn't have the one person that she's madly in love with. Mm -hmm. And that's her half-life. And now that she's able to get back to Jamie and go back to Scotland, now I think – and it's funny. It's hard to say that without your, with your children you're still living a half-life because Brianna is there. She is you know, a real tangible gift of Jamie to Claire. She's part of Jamie. But I still don't feel like Claire was able to live her life the way that she wanted to. And one of the few people who are actually able to see this is her best friend for life. Right. <laughs> Dr. Joe. Right. And he, yet yeah, even Dr. Joe says half life. You mm -hmm. know, you, you're living you're living a half life. And, you know, I'm, <laughs> by the way, the, the scenes with Dr. Joe, big fan. Oh, yes. Big yes. fan. Big, yes. big, yes. huge fan. Tell me, why were you such a fan? I want to see if we match up with this. Why am I such a fan? Yeah, why were you such a fan with uh, Dr. Joe? 
A, I think he's doing a phenomenal job acting. Mm -hmm. Like, I just feel like that's who this actor could be. He could just be speaking like that. I love how he sees Claire as an equal. When we've been seeing so much sexism uh, in this time frame. Um, I love how he just equal, not only in as a peer uh but equal in the respect the eyes that he gives her in the beginning of the episode um of like wow wow you you did you knew what you were saying you knew what you were doing i am in awe of you like he he respects claire he sees claire better than most people in this show and in the series do and that is why i love him so much mm -hmm. i you know a lot of people saying i want to see more of dr john want to see their their relationship you know blossom more and for me I mean, yes, I, I, I want to see it too, but the interactions that we got from the two of them, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the perfect interaction that in, in their relationship and everything that is involved with it, all the time that is spent with them, it's implicit in this one comment. And I know you know what comment I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. But as you're a skinny white broad with, with a lot of hair and a, and a nice ass, you don't say that to someone who you are not really close with. Correct. I, in, I would even have a hard time saying that to my my beautiful wife. I mean, I would because she's she's gorgeous and it is what it is. And it's I funny. I do have a lot of hair. And it's funny. But just think of that. Like, you don't say that to some to, to some worker, some colleague that that's there that happens to be in your office. You say that to a best friend. You know you can get away with that. And I loved that conversation real genuine moments between the two when she says and it's so funny because she's like she's so she's so matter of fact yeah, you know she's yeah. such a like a, a doctor am i attractive you know sexually <laughs> it's just like wait what yeah i love ashton yeah ashton i'm being punked again i know <laughs> good genuine moments between the two and when she does say thank you merry christmas he's like of course mm -hmm. like no problem. Yeah. All right, I'll see you later. Like, no big deal. Yeah. And, and everything that is implicit in that whole interaction, she's never going to see him again. He doesn't know, but she does. And, and and I'm so thankful we didn't get some stupid voiceover because that moment is just so beautiful. It breathed. It was able to do what it needed to do. Oh, God. I was so happy. So as he, her best friend for life, <laughs> points out that, you know, it's only her half life. Um, how do we feel about her? choosing to leave Brie. Now you are saying that this is not her choice because Brie get, lets her go. No, I disagree uh, well, well, because I sorry. think, thank you. I, I think that Brie allows for that choice that if Brie had put her foot down and said, listen, I've already lost two parents. Mm -hmm. She has, she's lost both fathers. She never got to meet one. She lost her dad. No one is going to walk me down the aisle. That is mm -hmm. family. We don't even have extended family around here. You know, like for her to say, I don't have another parent to do this. What about, um, you know, meeting your grandchildren? Wouldn't that be important? Like Brie wasn't the one saying all this stuff. Brie wasn't putting all these negative thoughts into Claire's head. You know, how do you know he still wants you? How do you know you're even going to find him? All this kind of stuff. She wasn't. Instead, she set Claire free to go and be that full self. And I love the transition that happened. Um, I, I, I'm on board with Brie in this episode. I just thought that it was a beautiful transition of an adult daughter speaking to her mother, the honesty conversation that they had, and for her to be able to do this and to tell her, listen, yeah, it's going to stink. It's going to stink. But you told me that the most powerful thing you've ever felt, the most true to you, to your core of being was Jamie. Yes, all of those things are true. I guess Claire is making a choice. All right, uh, let me let me back that train up a little bit here. She's making a choice. She is choosing to leave. I guess what my point ultimately is, Bree is far too eager to let her go. She, she's far too happy to say, go, mom, go, 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 get out of here. Please, please, please. Like, it's like, you know, like it's like a it's like a teenager trying to get her mother out of the room. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna suck. I know, but it's gonna be fine. You go. I'm I'm an adult now. That's the way that it felt to me. And because of that, for me, it takes away the emotional weight of that decision for Claire. She doesn't have to worry that Bree's upset. She doesn't have to worry that 
uh, she isn't going to be there because Brie says it's okay. It so you wanted it like absolves. a crying Brie. You wanted like a sad, even though Brie just said she's a lot like Claire. Sure, yeah. I, I do want that. Because Claire wouldn't have done that. Claire would have been very rational. Oh. Claire would have said, and Brie said, I'm not like my father's. I'm like you. Claire would have said, no, this this is what you need for your life. Mm. I've had you when I've needed you. Mm. I don't right. need you that same way. But here's the problem that I'm finding with Brie. And, and I think ultimately... My real issue here is not um, Sophie Skelton. I think my real issue is with the writing for Brie. I think the writing for Brie sometimes just doesn't make sense. And the reason why I say that is because her character motivations are all over the place. Because she needs some help. She needs she needs a little loving. Well, let me get into that. She does need help, which is why she needs her mother, which is why she shouldn't be so eager to just say, go. And it's not me saying this. Fact, not opinion. She said it. Mm -hmm. She said it last episode to Roger. And this is why I'm saying her character motivation is all over the, all place over the place because she is a 19 year old girl <laughs> that's true who, who would who would think i know that a 19 year old girl doesn't you know, know what God she forbid. wants and is one way one way and I one know. way the other day well, and i'm happy with the fact that brie is saying mom go because ultimately claire kind of does need permission from brie yeah. kind of yeah but i do want her i do want brie to struggle with this more because she says and I've lost things. That's what the whole Christmas tree touching and looking at the family well, photos was. We, we do have her say in I've lost things, the last episode, I'm happy for my mother, yep. but I'm sad because I know I'm going to lose her. Yes. And to me, that struggle, Claire should see that struggle. Claire should not just have Claire say, oh, but, you know, we have all these things going on. You're going to you're gonna be alone in your wedding and your first baby. and I'm not going to be there. And do you understand? Like, And it it, it just felt like. Brie wasn't it, it it just wasn't part of her character it just it, it just that's what the plot demanded so that's what Brie had to say I mom just, go. I disagree I think that is Brie's personality to look at the situation and say no what good would there be I mean here's the other thing they weren't bosom buddies she and her mom this is like the closest they ever were okay? and which is why they, she should be having a much harder time letting her go uh, <laughs> right I mean uh, like and again I think it's harder for Claire. Like, I'm looking at Brie as this 19-year-old. Oh, look at this. My Scottish boyfriend, quote, boyfriend, just decides to show up. And my mom might have to leave. I might have to have the house all to myself with all this mistletoe. Oh, man. I'm like, no, just... I'm, no I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. But but I I felt like... Um, I felt like the the harder the more emotions came from Claire. I could have I could have had more from Claire. I could have had more from Claire being like, am Am I really ready to do this? Like, we got it twice. I don't know how much more they could have put into this episode. Right. Like, I can't fathom, um, you know, you've lost your mom. I just kept thinking about you this episode. Sure. I, I really did. I was watching this episode thinking about how, you know, you didn't get to dance with your mom at our wedding mm -hmm. because she passed away when you, mm -hmm. when you were um, a teenager, you know, and um, how you have your dad and how hard it would be if your dad was like, hey, I think I want to go, like, and never come back. Yeah, I don't think I would be okay. I know. I, so my real problem here is, yeah, I think you're making my point for me here. But that's why I'm saying I was thinking of you. Yeah. Because I think that you are expecting Brie to react like you because you have a lot of what Brie has. I think. But I'm... what if your dad? What if your dad said, "Your dad loves your mom, like who passed away so much." What if your dad said, "I found a way to go see your mom, Blake." Mm-hmm. You're grown. I don't know what to do. You know how much your dad misses your mom. And I how would, he thinks about I would her still all the time. Oh, of course. I would, uh, of course I would say, you need to be happy. Please go. But I would still struggle with that. But would you let him see that struggle? Would yeah, you? I would. Of course I would. But wouldn't that be forcing your dad to stay? If you were like super emotional in front of your dad and were like, go dad, it's totally okay. He'd be like, man, no, it's not okay. But like that's why what you're saying and what you're acting is totally different. But, th and this is the problem I think that we have with television shows, just because in reality, that's how I would react. Doesn't necessarily mean that's how a person has to react in the book. And that's the why show? I say, oh, I'm sorry. In the show. That's why I say Claire has an obstacle here. Yes. It's 
do I go back to Jamie? And she has two, my daughter. she has two valid choices. One is go be with Jamie, be happy and, and lose out on Brie. Mm -hmm. The other is stay with Brie and live out the rest of my life here with her to make sure that she's taken care of. Both are valid choices. Yeah. Both are neither, neither is right. And neither is wrong. They yeah. are valid. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that choice of leaving to go be with Jamie to me, there isn't a lot of guilt there. It's like, uh, th there's not, she's not struggling enough with that cho choice. Who isn't? If, if like Brie uh, or Claire. Claire and Brie. I don't think Brie is struggling with it. And th the one thing that she did say, which I really wanted them to lean into, and I, I don't think they did enough. The one thing I really wanted them to lean into was when Brie said, go tell Jamie about me or yeah. go tell Jamie everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you left him for me. Now I'm giving you back. That is, oh my God. I loved that. I loved that. I wanted more of that. And I wanted Bree to have her own motivation for having her mother go. That was it. But I still don't think she or Claire struggled enough. In, in this. And that's why I'm saying I wish th that choice was harder for both of them. Let this story breathe, honey. It's just episode <laughs> five. That's true. That's it's just episode five. So give, but it's, it's, a ma it's a major moment. You just moment. said like what she said was perfect, that it hit you. So let that breathe. Right. And, and ultimately that moment when she says, please tell Jamie about everything. Implicit in that is please tell him about me a real honest moment. And, and again, this, sh this episode was full of those honest moments. Even Roger, when he gets out of the cab for the first time, he says, Oh my God, what am I doing here? Like either this is the dumbest thing that I've ever done yep. or it's the smartest thing that I've ever done. Yep. That is totally something that I would do, number one. And two, say, I'd be like, what am I doing? This is like ridiculous. Loved Roger in this episode. And, and Roger has been a character that's been kind of on the ride a little bit uh, between Bree and Claire. He's been, he's been there for the ride. Mm -hmm. But him taking an active role. Showing up, finding that print. Not mailing it to her, not calling, mm -hmm. saying, nope, I'm going to go deliver this in person and have an American Christmas mm -hmm. because it's his first Christmas mm -hmm. without his father. Right. You know, he's now deciding which life he's going to have. Yeah, he he right now is living a half-life himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, he... Am I in Scotland or am I going to take this chance on this girl and follow this crazy outlandish story? <laughs> because it's it's totally coming true. Um, Yeah. I, I I loved Roger. I did have a problem with Claire leaving and then suddenly, you know, the, the cry and then Brie like puts on her mask, her Santa hat, even though it wasn't a mask. She just puts on her Santa hat and it's like all of a sudden like, all right, mom's gone. See, I liked that. I thought it was great. I thought it was, I, I thought that was her moving on with her life. Like that was her creating her own it life quickly now. for me and i know it has to because it's tv yeah. but i was like i'm still sad hold on i just need a moment okay we're jolly all right this is great because i loved i loved the lobster roll the boston cream pie and the and the reading of the christmas carol i loved it it just happened so quickly that i was like whoa okay whiplash yeah <laughs> got a little whiplash there <laughs> how about roger when he walks up to the door and he hears the screaming Fighting. and he's like Oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And you, then he presses the doorbell again. I would have been like, you know what? I'm gonna go get a coffee. I'm gonna let this one breathe. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm gonna go get coffee, and I'm gonna come back with coffee, <laughs> and maybe I'll make everything better because these Boston people love their Duncan. Oh, we don't mess around with Duncan. No, they don't. So okay. Um. So Roger. You know there was a Duncan like right right around the corner. Of course there was. Right. <laughs> of course there was. He did a. I loved Roger. I. Um, I am so happy that not only he continues to have a great relationship, even just with Claire, it's mm -hmm. not always with Brie. You know, he does. He's able to talk to Claire and share this, um, this information that he's continued to dig into. Mm -hmm. Claire gave up. Claire gave up chasing Jamie. 
and Roger didn't. And how cool is that of Roger? Dog with his bone. And that is something, that is a struggle that Claire had that I really liked, which was, you shouldn't have done this. Mm -hmm. I could have lived my life Ugh. being totally like fine. Yep. I, I, was, I was okay. And now you came and you got my hopes back up again. You shouldn't have done it. That is her saying, I love how she turns it down. She says, no, I don't want this. It's, it's like her own little mini hero's journey. You know, like mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's the hero who has this, has this thing that they can affect change and they turn it down only to have something else come by and say, yes, you need to do this. And they do like Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. No, I don't want to go. I have to stay here. I have to help my uncle. Mm -hmm. His uncle and his aunt, spoiler alert, they die. They burn into fire from stormtroopers. <laughs> then Ben Kenobi takes him and he goes. You're going, you're going so off. Yes. Same thing with Claire. She says, no, I can't have this. And then, and then Bree says, no, no, you need to do this. And then she goes and she goes off to Scotland and she's on her journey. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect story for her. It, it's, it's great. I loved how they did it. And, and Roger being the catalyst to it all mm -hmm. is important. It's important. And it's important not only for, for Claire, but it's important for his relationship with Bree. I finally felt something between the two, between Bree oh, yeah. and, oh, and, yeah. and Roger. Did, yeah. did you feel the same thing? Oh, yes. What, what, at what point did you say, all right, I get it now? Get what? I get it, what they're doing with Bree and Roger. I see... Like I like last episode, I'm saying they have zero chemistry, none, nada, zil, mm -hmm. zilch. But this episode, in my opinion, they did. And I can tell you when. But when do you think? When was I fully on board? When, when are you on? When, when are you on the Roger train? Um, since day one. <laughs> well, did what? Okay, fine. Let, let me let me rephrase it. At what point during this episode were you like? I see what they're doing. I see the relationship burgeoning. I see how they've succeeded here in, in giving me a relationship that I can, because I know you had the same difficulties that I yeah, did last episode. Yeah. So what changed your mind this episode? Um, when he was able to be real with her during that history conversation, when Roger was being real with her and kind of putting her a little bit in her place, like, Hey, you know what? The father that raised me wasn't my father either. Mm-hmm. You know, like, stop, stop your whining. Mm -hmm. Like, this, this was important. This was important. And how wonderful is that, that I was able to get this story. Mm -hmm. And that to me was um, when you, when you do, when you care about someone, but you're able to kind of, you get to, you get to tell them the truth a little bit about themselves mm -hmm. and you get to kind of hold them and say, no, no, that is not, that is not how I see this situation at all. So yeah. I, that did it for me, her talking about history afterwards ruined it a little bit. What did it for me with her was <laughs> the, the, the whiplash when she came out with the lobster rolls. I love how Brie like curls her legs up on the couch when she sits with them, or even when she was watching TV with him, right. those moments of showing how comfortable she is just curling up on the couch with him. That was it for me with Brie, right. but with Roger to Brie, it was him um, you know, being, being real and honest with her. How about you? I would agree. I think I saw it most. I mean, you saw glimpses of it throughout the episode. Uh, you saw glimpses of it when, you know, the, the dark shadows and she's like, wow, you watch a lot of TV, huh? You know, like, and you know, he brings out the, the whiskey and, uh, and they, they toast to freedom and whiskey. And he, he's talking about the Cape Crusader, which leads into the Batman thing. All great. But what really sold it for me is that final scene between the two. And he gives her a Christmas carol. And mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that is a real character thing. Like even throughout a lot of this episode, Brie, has, Brie is there to be, to be the foil for Claire. Not a foil, but she's there to be there with Claire and be like, you know, dad must have hated me because, you know, every time he looked at me, he thinks of Jamie. And you know, did you ever resent me? And and Claire, I saw actually this as a blossoming. Of well, Brie. well, well. Let let, yeah. let let me say that it was it wasn't. It, I didn't feel like it was a genuine thing. I just felt like it was something that the writers were doing to get you Claire's perspective. But the first real genuine thing Brie does for herself is smelling the pipe. <sighs> Like in Frank's theme and like I, 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 that, that's a pants off moment for me when she's smelling the pipe and she's going through all the pictures and she mm -hmm. sees, 
him with with her as a baby you, you know doing skin to skin and like that whole thing pants off moment and then they also and that was the first one and and that was a real character thing like mm-hmm. you don't get to see brie mourn her dad and i don't need to see like this whole you know like yeah twilight thing where she's sitting in a room and it's going around yeah. showing all the i don't need that what i need to see is that is that that pipe moment that was that was beautiful yes and then getting back to my original point which is she has this real moment with roger when she gives him the the sandwich and the boston cream pie and he gives her a christmas carol and they sit down together he's got her his arm around her and they finally they finally coalesces for me it finally it's like they finally done something for each other they're not just giving plot they're not there for um you know to get you to to blather information for you the viewer you know she she's doing something for herself and he is doing something for himself that's natural to him and they're there to take care of each other now they're there to take both of their half lives and combine it to make it one single life that was when i was like okay i get it i i love it i i just love it speaking of frank and I love that little memorial that they have and how you get a chance to did. think back about it. And you got to see a picture of Tobias and you were like, I was hi, like, I was all about it. Huge fan. Sandy candy. Give me your thoughts. Oh man. That blue eyeshadow. She needs a minute with Mary. Um, I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it for a couple of reasons. Um, listen, we all bump into those kind of people, those mm-hmm. people who just ru- really get under your skin. You bump into them real life. But what what it did for me, it wasn't like, oh, remember, Frank had a mistress. It, it wasn't that for me. It was actually what needed to push Claire into stop living your half-life. Mm-hmm. That when, when Sandy Candy said, you wasted 20 years of life with him and I would give anything to have one day. And yes, that hurt Claire because it was like, sorry. But to me, it was like, it was the final thing to push Claire. Like, why are you here? Why are you still in Boston? Right. This, this was, this woman is, is telling you it, when you love someone, if you would do anything to spend one more day with them. So what the hell are you still doing here? Mm-hmm. So I loved that because that to me was another push. That was the universe telling Claire, let's go. You've got the paper. Time's a wasting. But it also allowed Brianna to open up to her mom and say, who was that? Brie has probably always had this questioning. Now she's had it. She gets to understand, okay, everyone's flawed. Like any little ounce left that she could have had mad at her mom for daddy loved you and you did nothing about it. Mm -hmm. That is one more thing that Brie can forgive her mother for. Sure. Um, And it allowed to have this honest conversation that I'm glad that Brie got to bring back up to say at the Stones, we need to be honest. So I I liked the Sandy Candy, not to be like, oh, remember, remember her and how she showed up. No, I liked it because it pushed it it like smacked Claire in the face with a fish. It's like, what are you still doing here, girl? Okay, come on. We know he's in Scotland. Let's get going. Why are you wasting time? Right. Both Sandy Candy and even Joe, they work on a thematic level Mm -hmm. for Claire. They Mm -hmm. work on a level that's, what am I doing here? Yes. And even, even Brie to an extent, which is her telling her to go. Everything in this universe is telling her, get the hell out of here. And Joe says it perfectly. F fate. F fate. You, and you make your own fate. You do your own thing. Go Mm -hmm. back. And I like the whole, I mean, is it convenient that she's there? And is it convenient that she just happens to run? Of course it is. But what it does for Claire is it pushes her in that next Of course she'd direction. be at his memorial th- like thing. Of, th- yes. yes. Right. But it, is it convenient they just happen to run into each other and, yeah. oh, hey, this is Claire. This is his wife. And this was his former student. Like, it, yeah. okay, what are we doing? But I liked it. Me too. I, I thought it was Me good. Too. And I, I also kind of understand where Sandy Candy is coming from. She's saying to Claire, you were the one who screwed all this up. You were the one who kept Frank away from me. She says that she's selfish. She's selfish and you wouldn't give him up. You had to live the lie. Now, listen, is she right? No, not necessarily. Because Claire and Frank both, Claire was the one who said, listen, let's get a divorce. And Frank said, no. Mm -hmm. And is she right? Is Sandy Candy right saying that Frank was there for Brie? Probably, yes. And is she also right for saying, 
Frank loved you. Yeah. Yes, I think that yeah. she is right. But I don't think she's wholly right that it was all Claire's fault. It wasn't. Well, she got the one side that she wanted to hear. Right. She, it, it, from her own perspective, is saying, if this lady, yeah. it's all her fault. I could have been happy. I could have made him happy. This blue eyeshadow. But, <laughs> but you had to F it up. So uh, I actually kind of quite liked Sandy Candy uh, and everything that she had to bring. Yeah. To to on a thematic level, at the Correct. very least. I agree. I agree. Uh, to, to the episode. Just to further push her into that. So uh, we're going to take a quick break to tell you a little bit more about today's sponsor. A reminder that today's sponsor is Bark box it's a monthly box of dog goodies <laughs> i love it i love the whole idea so it, it was established in 2011 and uh it's committed to making dogs happy they work with local and independent businesses to achieve this they only work with vendors who care deeply about the health and happiness of dogs you know it's it's awesome there are <laughs> there are all types of dogs that get to have this. So you could have a big dog. You could have a small and cute dog. You could have a one, six, or 12-month plan. So tell me a little bit more what you know about BarkBox. Right, please. yeah. It, it, again, you can choose the dog that you get. Like, like, I'm sorry. You get to choose the, the box for your dog, the, the size of your dog. It comes with uh, size-appropriate toys, size-appropriate treats. And it, it's all good, natural products that, that they make. And they're, they're good for the dog. And it gets to be a little surprise. It's four to six natural treats and fun toys. So it's just like your dogs are getting a fun little present. Right. All, every month. I love it. Every I month. I absolutely love it. And it, you get a chance. I mean, for those of you, you know, you know dog lovers. I mean, you, you love your dog. They're like your own child. They're your own breed. You know, you're out there and you're, you're taking care of them. You want to give them the best that you possibly can give them. So, you know, whether it's your son, daughter, or family member, or someone who's a friend who has a, a dog, this could be a great gift to give. It's holiday season. It's a great gift for your loved one. So, remember, there's numbers of ways that you can send a gift and make this pup really lucky and happy. And it keeps on giving because you can make it a subscription. So, right. if you're thinking and you have this friend or this family member in mind with holiday season coming up and you're like, what am I going to get them? Do they love their dog? If so... <laughs> And remember, for an extra uh, free extra month of BarkBox, visit BarkBox.com slash open when you subscribe for a six or 12 month plan. Now, my love, now that we're back to the episode, can we just talk about the transition that Claire made when she was saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to go back, steps into the puddle. And she's in Boston, and then boom, she's in, she's in the 1700s. Did you like this transition? Yep, I did. I actually really, really did. Okay. Um, I loved it because it is something that is pulled from the books. Um, I loved it because I I don't know. I just I always love seeing carriages in this show. I know it sounds weird, but I have like carriage <laughs> lust when I watch these carriages. Carriage so lust. Hashtag really, carrot, carriage right? lust. Right? I don't know. I just, the carriage moments always get me. They're always uh, someone, I, I don't know, each carriage scene I see, I've loved it. So this is just another one. Um, no, I. it reminded me of the hand holding. You know, and coming off the oh, plane into right. Boston yes, yes, yes. And, and then coming off the boat into France. It reminded me a lot of that. And I just felt home. I was nervous, like, oh, my God, they have so much time left. And she still has <laughs> to get to Scotland. She still has to go and touch the stones and has to get changed. She packed that whole bloody outfit. She has to still have to get changed in it. And I just love that we got to skip that and step in a puddle. Right. And now I'm never going to look at puddles the same way. And I understand why some people didn't like it. I understand why people. Some people think it's a cop out. Um, I don't. I've and, already seen the Stones twice. And exactly the reason why I don't think it's a cop out is because 